Hey everyone, so if you're in the fighting game community, the big news from yesterday's Summer Game Fest 2023 was of course the gameplay reveal of Mortal Kombat 1. This is what I wanted to make a video on, give you my thoughts and my early impressions on the game. Of course, this is all gonna be just speculation slash my opinion based on what we've seen. Nobody I think has actually played the game and information out there is basically what we've seen, but I do have some thoughts that I wanted to share. Now, of course, because MK is MK and YouTube is YouTube, I'm not actually going to be able to react to the gameplay reveal. That would get demonetized faster than I could blink. So you're going to have to enjoy some of this MKXL gameplay in the background while I talk about the reveal. I think if you're around, you've probably seen this, but if not, go check it out and then come back and then you'll have my thoughts. All right, to sum up my thoughts on Mortal Kombat 1's gameplay reveal, I gotta say, while I'm hyped, I'm honestly not as hyped as I thought I would be for this new NRS game. Especially considering that Mortal Kombat 11 released like four years ago at this point. I don't know, maybe it's just because Street Fighter 6 released recently and it's as good as it is. Uh, it's an excellent game. But compared to what I've been playing and what I've been seeing from SF6, MK1 does look like it has a couple of weak points. There are of course many aspects from this gameplay reveal that I'm excited for and I'm of course going to play MK1 when it comes out, but I do have some reservations and concerns. Mainly, what I don't want to happen is I don't want this game to be MK11 2.0. I'm hoping there is enough innovation and changes here to make this an actual fresh experience and I hope there will be significant enough deviations from MK11 that it will feel like a new game. Alright, first of all let's get into the positives. I think, in general, MK1 looks absolutely gorgeous. The biggest improvement has definitely been the stages. I actually thought that uh, MK11 stages were kind of boring and to some extent this extended to MKX as well. Here they look absolutely epic. I think it's immediately noticeable how much better the stages look. In terms of general graphics, that's always something that NRS nails. All of their games look pretty good, their character models are great and all that. And in general, all of the NRS games look uh, overall pretty AAA. And that is of course no different from MK1. I'm also intrigued by the game's general concept as well. I think this new approach of having Liu Kang be the god and Raiden just be the human and the general remixing of who's a friend, who are the enemies, will lead to a lot of interesting scenarios. I do like that there is a reset point in the story and we'll get to see new aspects of old characters. I'm so happy that meter and meter management is finally back. While the MK11 mechanic of having a defensive and offensive bar seemed interesting at first, it quickly revealed that it has some downsides and I think overall it probably ended up being the thing that most people complained about when it came to MK11's gameplay. It also looks like from the reveal that there is way more freedom in combos. Combos seem extended uh, compared to how short they were in MK11 and it does actually look like you have some different approaches and different startups and all that instead of having essentially two or three very short combos like you had in the previous game. Now, we don't know too much about the mechanics of MK1, aside from the few things that were shown. It also looks like characters have more varied and complete toolkits. We saw a lot of moves being used by Kung Lao and Sub-Zero and Scorpion especially. So instead of cobbling together a couple of moves like in MK11, it does look like characters will have more complete toolkits. This should tie back to the more freedom in combos because the more options and more special moves you have, the more combos are varied and again, the more creativity you have. And honestly, I am interested in this cameo fighter mechanic. I think it's a good way to bring assists in, which have always existed in tower mode and offline modes in MK games. 
I think it's an interesting way to bring that mechanic into the game. Um, now, how it will feel in practice, we don't really know. We saw that cameo fighters can do x-rays. We saw that they can do fatalities instead of the player. So it will be interesting to see how this all kind of works together. But, you know, if this is the main sort of distinctive mechanic of MK1, I'm honestly happy with it. And I also got to mention that some of the characters look great. I think Kenshi in particular is easily the best looking character shown both moves wise and redesign wise in the trailer. I really like that suit he has on. Uh, Kung Lao looks pretty good too. I wonder how he'll play as he you know, seems to be missing his signature hat. It should bring an interesting new dimension to Kung Lao, which is I think he's always been a cool character. Now with all of that, I did mention at the start that I am not as hyped for MK1 as I could be. And there are several reasons for that. First of all, I think it's important to address the big elephant in the room, which I think everybody noticed when they were watching the gameplay reveal, and that is the animations. The animations still, and I can't believe I'm saying this, still look absolutely inferior and piss poor. I cannot believe the animations from NRS are still this weak. They had so many years, they had no time pressure unlike previously with going from MKX to Injustice 2 to MK11. I see no reason why they couldn't have hired more animators or had, did something different from the ground up and cleaned up how the animations look. This game looks so clunky for now. The characters are awkward, the moves are just like weird feeling, it just does not look great. Also, I gotta mention that there were no pokes shown throughout the trailer and I think there is a good reason for that because MK and NRS pokes always look ridiculous and are always the stupidest part of the character's animation toolkit. Now, the weakness in animation is especially noticeable when you compare the gameplay reveal of MK1 to the recently released Street Fighter 6 which has fantastic animations and also to any of the gameplay trailers for Tekken 8. Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6 look next-gen animation-wise. MK1 looks like it's still stuck in the past, or some of the animations look like they're from a King of Fighters game, which is like a double-A game at best. I don't know, it's really, really jarring and really, really noticeable. And again, that was my big hope that the animations would finally be improved, and it didn't happen. With that, one of the things I also noticed, and this ties to the animations in the gameplay reveal, is that the game still seems to lack impact. This has been an issue with NRS titles, I think since Injustice 2, that a lot of even the big heavy hitting moves simply lack impact. I mean, just as an example, take a look at when you get an EX SPD from Zangief in Street Fighter 6. The impact and weight of that move is conveyed beautifully, both in the sound design, the animation, and also the way the camera moves. A lot of the newer fighters have a lot of impact and weight behind them. Tekken 8 is also the same way. That's not what I felt when I was looking at MK1. There was a Johnny Cage nut punch in the trailer. I mean, the guy punches you in the nuts so hard that you fly into the air. That move should have an incredible amount of impact. And that is completely missing, that feeling. I don't know if it's because of the animations or the animation and sound design together, but it just doesn't have the same kind of impact feel. This used to be circumvented by having the x-ray mechanic where you know you hit a character and it would zoom in and you see their bones breaking, but now that has lost much of its impact. You know, that type of technology was very impressive when it first came out in MK9 it's less impressive now and the impact of how moves feel still hasn't been improved. Second big thing to me is the game just feels like it lacks a distinct style. Again, I think the character models are great, the stages are great, overall the game is very high fidelity, but to me it just lacks any sort of personality or distinctive art style. Again, I hate making all of the comparisons, but Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 have so much style and personality, it just oozes from every aspect of the game. How stages are set up in Street Fighter 6, how characters look in Tekken 8, you have like very, very, very distinct styles for these games. I hope that as we see more of MK1, there will be some of that style coming through, but for now, it just doesn't look like it has any. 
Personally, I would much rather take a stylized graphic style and a consistent art style instead of a game being realistic. Especially since this realistic nature, to me, kind of clashes with how over the top and just not realistic the gore and the violence is overall. And finally, to end this, I know it's controversial, I know it's never going to happen, but I gotta say, at this point I'm really tired of fatalities. To me, this mechanic has run its course. Fatalities were fine when they were like 3 seconds long, you know, when Sub-Zero would just rip your spine out and people would freak out. But now you have these 30 to 40 second over the top violent moves, which do nothing but drag out and waste time after matches. Once you've seen a fatality like 5 times, you'll be bored of it anyways, and the whole mechanic again would just become a huge annoyance. To me, brutalities are way more interesting, and I wish that mechanic would eventually come to replace fatalities. Again, it's never going to happen, but it is a wish. It's so much more rewarding pulling off brutalities and being rewarded with a gory kill for actually accomplishing some specific task during the match. I feel like brutalities are the solution. It's more interesting, it's more mechanically rewarding instead of just, you know, tapping some button combo and getting a 30 second animation. Anyways. We got off track there a little bit, going back into MK1, last thing I have to talk about is the monetization scheme of this game, which I think seems pretty shady. Now we haven't seen any loot boxes, we haven't seen any gear, and I'm just hoping and praying that there won't be any in MK1, but I think the fact that the game was open to pre-orders, even like the Ultimate Edition, which costs like what, like 150 bucks or something like that, was open before we even saw a second of gameplay, is pretty egregious. Plus, of course, the pre-order comes with a week of early access to the game. Again, when it comes to fighting games, giving that sort of advantage is just disgusting in my opinion, because it is essentially going to force people who even remotely want to take the game seriously to pre-order. And we still don't know what we're getting. I mean, I pre-ordered MK11 and I ended up being disappointed by it. I thought MK11 was a waste of time overall. But, you know, that's just the world we're living in. I think the overall monetization scheme looks pretty awful, but again, when we think about that, Street Fighter 6 is or only marginally better in that aspect, but, but I thought it's worth mentioning just a little bit. So yeah, I'll be interested in getting more from demos and maybe people will get to play the game as well and they'll have some sort of info on how it actually feels to play MK1. I hope it will be good. And again, I will be playing it, I will be naturally checking it out. I hope it will recapture some of the fun I've had in MKX and Injustice 2, which really didn't come through in MK11. So yeah, that's what I'll say. I'm excited for now, but I do have some reservations regarding this game. So anyways, those were my thoughts on Mortal Kombat 1. If you did enjoy this video, like, comment, subscribe as usual, turn on post notifications, and yeah, I hope to catch all of you next time with whatever video I put out. Take care and peace out.